Hello and welcome back to Louis Bertou's Music Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing orchestral manoeuvres in the dark. <sighs> the dark, it scares me. No, not that kind of dark. We're talking about the tall, dark and handsome kind of dark, so there's no need to be afraid. Anyway, <laughs> fucking hell. Organisation came out in 1980, 1980, and it's the band's second album after their self-titled release that came out earlier in the, the same year. So they released two albums in 1980. And I'd say that Organisation is, their second album is definitely better than the first overall. Um, that said, the, the track Almost from their first album probably trounces most of the songs on Organisation. I'd say Almost is definitely a highlight of their discography for me. The synth line on that track is still, it still sounds so good to me in 2021. It's amazing um, how it must have sounded in 1980 or even 1979 because it was released, um, you know, I believe it was released as the B-side to their first single, Electricity. And the interesting thing about that single is that it was, it was released on Factory Records, the esteemed Factory Records. So Orchestral Maneuvers certainly started life as a, a post-punk band. They were in the same circles as Joy Division and later New Order. But yeah, but Joy Division in 1979 and A Certain Ratio as well were another band on Factory around that time. Um, and yeah, so their first release was on Factory Records. But Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark quickly moved to Din Disc, their second label, for the next three, which is... This one here, Organisation, I have a copy, it didn't cost me very much money, in fact it cost me five pounds, which ain't bad for a vinyl record. But they released this one, Architecture and Morality, and, and also the debut as well, so the first three records, all on DIN disc. And then the band quickly, uh, soon after the third record, got signed to Virgin Records, which was a major label at the time. But one of the, the cool major labels, they were putting out quite a lot of cool stuff, Virgin, in the 70s. You know, we had Robert Wyatt, Faust, uh, Gong, were all on Virgin in, around that time. Uh, but obviously in the 80s, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark signed to them as well. Um, so yeah, there you go. And I personally think they put out their best record on Virgin. They put out Dazzle Ships, which is, yeah, it's just, it is the best Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark record. There's no question about it. It's charming, it's light, and there's some real great songs on it. Um, and some, also some cool sound collage stuff as well, which keeps things interesting. Obviously, I will be giving a full review to that one because I also have it on vinyl. <sighs> but for now, I'm talking organisation. So yeah, this, the second album released on Dindisc Records. Slightly better than the first, but not as good as Dazzle Ships. It's quite clear to see the post-punk influence on this record, um, especially the influence from Joy Division. I get the impression that this record, Organisation, was quite heavily influenced by Closer, the second Joy Division album, which came out, I think came out about four months earlier, um, on Factory Records, of course. And, and that record, Closer, is just, it's such a striking album, it really is. I mean, regardless of the story of Ian Curtis's um, suicide, like, Closer itself is still a macabre, funeral procession-like album. Um, yeah, very, very dark on Closer. A lot of the songs are predicated on a really simple pattern on the synth or a, a drum part. So there's this, like, bringing together of simple, catchy melodies, but then also just slow pace and trudge and depression and kind of yeah like the songs are weighed down by depression it sounds like but of course they are beautiful as well um, let's not forget that I'd especially call attention to Closer's B-side which is the, the final four tracks they really man they really feel like a funeral procession they just they're so dark and so slow and, and it feels like that side almost goes on forever but it's, it's amazing because of it OMD, on this record here, especially on the B-side, I think took some influence from the B-side of Closer. Because if you look, there's four songs. 
We have the misunderstanding, the more I see you, promise and stand low on the B side. So there's that um, direct influence there. But also, I get the same impression from the B side of this than I do in Closer. This kind of feeling that it's trudging along. And I can't really put my finger on why it is, but um, it's there. One difference though is Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark are definitely a lot lighter and a lot more optimistic sounding in their in their uh, more drawn out tracks. And I'd say the effect is less powerful than Joy Division, but still listenable and still, you know, fairly interesting, fairly fun, fairly, um, it's certainly something. But I just say that, <laughs> yeah, if, if orchestras, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark imitate Joy Division, they come off as second rate immediately. It just doesn't work. They don't have the depth, they don't have the darkness, they don't have the power. I think orchestral manoeuvres, what they do best is distill political concepts and distill um, sort of angst of the time in pop songs and in really catchy melodies and, and shorter songs overall. Like you'll notice in their later records that they dispel with the six minute long songs which crop up on this one here, especially on the back half. And I think um, it was a wise move, certainly a wise move. Nonetheless, the record is still interesting, even if it is a little bit, you know, derivative perhaps, or wearing its influences strongly on its sleeves. Um, it's, but I, I would say that Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, OMD, would uh, certainly go on to perfect their sound a little more on records like Dazzle Ships, and even Junk Culture, which is a really fun record, and it, it it feels more OMD-like than this one, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. So, some songs on the back half of Organisation drag slightly. Promise and Stanlow, especially. Though I do enjoy the intro to Stanlow, I think it's, it's got a certain inevitability and darkness and weight to it. I just think six minutes is a little too long for that track, especially at the end of the record as well. I might just switch over and play something else at that point. However, some songs I do really like from the album are, well, let's begin with, with um, Enola Gay and get that one out of the way because it is a classic after all. It really displays the band's earnest political message. It displays their sort of able ability to magnetize catchy synth melodies as if they're you know as easy as breathing almost um it what else does it do it's just it's a damn good song it's probably the band's best single so far i would say almost is a strong contender but that technically wasn't a single it was a, a b-side to the electricity single so yeah yeah, it's just catchy, it's damn good. Um, and then another track that I like is The Misunderstanding from the B-side, which opens the B-side, actually. And it's really, it's quite creepy, actually, the way that song uh, introduces itself. The sound design, the sound effects used sort of bring up this bleak factory. Um, I don't know, a bleak set of factories, like a work, a workhouse, something like that. Maybe in East Germany, perhaps, while it's raining, drizzling. Grey skies, grey floor, grey everything, you know. A bit like the cover, although while this is a natural scene, it brings up more uh, industrialness, industriousness. Is that a word? It brings up an industrial power plant is what I'm trying to say, that track The Misunderstanding. And then when the actual song itself comes in, it, it's got that classic OMD, charming, slightly dinky sounding keyboard sound. <laughs> And, and very, very catchy melody, all wrapped up in a consumable package. So yeah, that's a pretty good song to me. Probably the best one on the B-side. But really, my favourite song on the record always has been VCL XI, and I don't quite know why, because it's not one that really gets talked about much. VCL XI has this great bombastic beat, which is, it is helped by really bumping bass and <laughs> god I sound lame but yeah bumping bass and a really hard hitting electronic drum pattern it's just that would be enough really but then there's this great uh, synth melody which 
It's not just a synth melody. There's just so many great synth melodies on this played by the... I don't know who it is, but it's someone playing a synthesizer. It's just immediately catchy, immediately gratifying, and just always makes me happy when I hear it. And then, to top it off, you've got this great little bits of sound design which occasionally buzz through the mix and enliven the music, give it some, some juice and some spice. Um, really, overall, it's just a, it's a cracking song and one of my, probably my favourite off the album, one of my favourite tracks from OMD in general, um, especially from their early years, from those first three records. But yeah, um, that's really... All the songs I'm going to talk about from this album, uh, it's not its not one of their best. I'd say it's top three. I think if I didn't have it on vinyl, I wouldn't listen to it as much as I do. But because I have it on vinyl, it, it occasionally gets some spin time. And it is quite innocuous in places, so you can put it on and it'll, it'll fade into the background a little bit, um, especially the back half. But yeah, I would say, I would recommend it if you're a, a fan of British music in general, or post-punk, or new wave, synth-pop. It's certainly recommended listening. Um, but beyond that, I would, I would probably encourage you to check out Dazzle Ships or Junk Culture. They are a little more, I guess, just solid and, and more enjoyable to listen to. But this one here has a bit more... It perhaps has a bit more of a story, I guess, than junk culture. Like, junk culture is fun, it's pleasurable to listen to. This one, it can be work at times, organisation, but it shows more of a band finding their sound rather than one who had perhaps settled on a sound. Um, and for that, in addition to the three songs I mentioned, which I really do enjoy, I give this uh, album a 7 out of 10, which I think is deserved. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this band in general, what I've said about the albums, you know, my own opinions. Call me up on things. Tell me I've said something wrong, please. Um, and yeah, let me know if you like the album, if you dislike it, um, and I'll see you in the next review when I talk about some more vinyl. Bye.